welcome to my YouTube channel. If you enjoy these videos, please click like and subscribe. And if you click the bell, you'll be notified of videos that are uploaded. We're going to talk about the Amityville uh, murder, mass murder, which involves Ronald Joseph Butch DeFeo Jr., born September 26, 1951. We're not going to spend a lot of time on this because most people are familiar with this. So it was 6.30 p.m. Wednesday, November 13th. Mm, the 13th, isn't that an interesting number? Uh, in 1974, 23-year-old DeFeo entered Henry's Bar in Am Amityville, Long Island, New York, and declared, you've got to help me. I think my mother and father are shot. DeFeo and a small group of people went to 112 Ocean Avenue, which, by the way, the address was changed to 108 Ocean Avenue. Um, so one in the group... DeFeo's friend Joe Yeswit made an emergency call to the Suffolk County Police who searched the house and found that six family members were dead in their beds, all facing down on their stomachs. There was Dawn, his sister Dawn, his sister Allison, his brother John Matthew, and Mark, his brother Mark, parents Louise and Ronald Sr. Ronald DeFeo Jr., also known as Butch, was the eldest of the family and the lone surviving member. He was taken to the police department at first for his own protection after suggesting to police that the killings might have been carried out by a mob hitman. Crucial evidence uh, he had, he also admitted uh, once he, that he confessed and that he said, once I started, I couldn't stop and it all went so fast. He'd taken a bath and redressed and detailed where he discarded crucial evidence such as blood-stained clothes and the Marlin 35 caliber before going to work as usual. Um, so his trial began October 14th, 1975. His lawyer, William Weber, mounted an affirmative defense case of insanity involving that he killed his family in self-defense because he heard their voices plotting against him. The insanity plea was supported by psychiatrist Dale Schwartz uh, and Harold Zolan maintained that he was a user of heroin and LSD and he had an antisocial personality disorder and was aware of his actions at the time of the crime. He was found guilty on all six counts of second degree murder. He was sentenced to six concurrent sentences of 25 years to life. So there he is in police custody. Here he is with his police number. Um, this shows the house and in the lower corner, the beautiful family that he murdered. Here they are again, the beautiful family that had their entire lives cut short. So the interesting thing about this is all six victims were found face down, no sign of struggle. And the rifle wasn't fitted with a sound suppressor. So, and there were no sedatives administered. So this is strange that even neighbors didn't report hearing gunshots fired. They just heard the family sheepdog Shaggy barking. So DeFeo Jr. had a volatile relationship with his father but the motives for the killings became unclear. Since his conviction, DeFeo has given several varying accounts of how the killings were carried out. So this is typical of someone possibly with a mental condition uh, changed, you know, changing their story. He said only person he killed was Dawn, that it was an accident and they struggled over the, lice, the rifle. So... This is, you know, the story on this. You can research this and change it. I think where I'm going to focus on this is the people who bought the house afterwards claimed uh, George and Kathy Lutz and their three children. They lived in the house less than a month and claimed that they were terrorized by paranormal phenomena while living there. That also has been questioned. Um, but I feel like because we already know uh, that Ronald did it. This isn't like a murder mystery, but I think that I'm interested in why the house or if the house 
is haunted. And let's proceed with that. Now, those of you who stay on my channel know that my regular decks for these is usually the Haunted House Tarot followed by a go-to deck, okay? And a go-to deck can be Universal Weight, Robin Wood. It's just a deck that I'm comfortable doing readings with. So I'm going to ask the question, and of course, this is Haunted House Tarot deck, so it's more than likely one of these cards is going to show it's haunted, which is why we follow up with a go-to deck. Um, is the Amityville House at now 108 Ocean Avenue, is this haunted? Is this house haunted by paranormal? Um, so we have somebody struggling here. Three of cups. Wow. She is really struggling. Now that could have been, you know, it's hard to believe that all this shooting going on in the house and nobody's waking up and everybody's face down in the dead in the bed. That's very weird. So now we're going to go to the go-to deck, uh, which I'm going to grab the universal weight and say, is the Amityville, same question, is this house haunted by the paranormal? Because the Haunted House Tarot suggests that those who died there struggling are still in the house wondering what happened. It's almost like they, they're in a state of confusion, like they're frozen in time. Like what happened? What happened? And this would be the yes card because I have an agreement with my tarot cards that if a question I ask can be answered with a, S, a yes and, you, and it has to be a strong yes, then pull an ace and this is an ace, and yes, the house is haunted by the paranormal. Um, all right, so it doesn't look like George was making that up, which is, you know, when you think about it, why would you live in a house only a month and then move out? <laughs> so what do we need to know about the paranormal activity in the Amityville? Whoa. Oh, looks like the girls that were murdered are angry. So that would be Dawn and Allison. Um, because these are two women and they are upset and it's almost like they want to take revenge for having their lives cut short. It's almost like they, they want revenge. So they're throwing things around or they're fighting, you know, they've got like this fight energy. Um, look at this sneaking around the corner. I don't know that if they fully know who murdered them. Like it, because it looks like they're still looking for who did it. Like the shadow people, who did it? Who did this? Like they're sneaking around the corners with their weapons, ready to wallop whoever, you know, this is definitely, this is definitely revenge and it's definitely still women. There's, it's, this is the girls, Dawn and Allison are really angry. Let's reach out and communicate with Dawn. Oh, let's see where I use the steampunk for that. So this is the steampunk. And I'm going to reach out and I'm going to ask Dawn to come through. And I'm going to say, are we able to communicate or is Dawn willing to communicate with us? Dawn, are you there? And do you still know who killed you? Do you know who murdered you if you're there? So she's peeking through the veil right now. Yes, I'm here. <laughs> she, and she's like, what do you want? <laughs> it's like she's peeking through the veil and she's like, what do you want? Do you know who murdered you? Do you know who murdered you? You know, sometimes they don't. If they were um, sleeping, oh, she does, brother, holding hands with a sibling. Okay, so she's aware that it was a sibling. Okay, so Dawn does know. I wonder if the sister knows. Let's call in Allison. Allison, do you know who, do you know who murdered you, Allison? This is such a tragic thing. Allison's in a better place than Dawn um, because this is the card about going to the light and the sun and being happy. And she feels like she's showing us like she thought she had a good relationship with that brother. See her? She thought she had a good relationship with the brother. Um, but she's looking at the brother now. See her looking at the brother? I don't know if you can hone in on the face. But she's looking sternly at the brother now. But it's not like with hatred, but it's almost like she understands. Sorry about that. The camera's having a little issue. Um, it's almost like she understands now that the that the brother, and you know, are you haunt are you kind of haunting the house, Allison? Are you haunting the house? Are you causing the activity? Um 
Yeah, she she thinks she is too. <laughs> she's um her she was in her bed. She's like I'm in my bed and this loud noise, like deafening noise. So she did hear the gunshot be right before she died. She did hear the she, like all this noise, the bang, the gunshot sounded like this huge noise and she's covering her ears. She's covering her ears. She's saying she, I died in my bed. I died in my bed. Um and your brother's in prison now forever. He'll be there till he dies. What, um, what do you think about this, that your whole family was murdered by the brother? What, what are your thoughts about this? She's like, he destroyed all of our lives, the whole group. See, the whole group of swords she's carrying. You have to love the tarot cards in the sense that when you're looking at situations like this and you're communicating with the deceased, they're really through this deck. This deck is definitely um, one of my go-to decks for communicating with the deceased. Um, and I always am very thankful to Dawn, even though you're angry, and Allison, even though you're upset, um, that they're, they feel like they have to protect. Look at her. Now, Allison feels like she has to protect the family. So she's like at the house, pro still protecting the family, even though they're passed over. There's like this huge, like, I have to protect them. I have to, I have to gather them all up in my arms and get them out of the house, right? from what's from this horrible thing that's happening. So there's this sense of protection with Allison. Um, I'm going to put the cards back and I'm going to see if John, John Matthew can come through. Can John Matthew come through? Wow, isn't this interesting? And now we pull the uh, um, mail card. This is what I mean, folks. When, when you start reading or learning to read the tarot cards, you don't ever have to worry about being bored again because you can entertain yourself for hours with these cards. Um, so this is, he was studying. He, you know, he, he was smart. He was intelligent. He's like, I had, you know, I've grown up now. So he's obviously, he's grown up off the planet. Here's the world. This is the world. He had to grow up, you know, outside of the world. I'm grown up now outside of the world. And so he still continued his studies and there's a world over here too. There's so definitely off planet. He grew, he's, so he's grown up off planet. Um, are you aware that your brother murdered you? Yeah. In my bed. Look at this folks in the bed. I mean, seriously, you can't make this stuff up. Even if you tried to make it up, you couldn't make it up in the bed, died in the bed. And there's the brother over him. Um, and he feels like the, the angels are going to judge the brother. Like he believes in the biblical, um, and nothing against biblical, but he's got the belief that he, the judgment day is coming. Like even when, when he crosses over, when that brother crosses over judgment day, he's going to have judgment day. That's what he, that that's what he is. And I don't believe that, um, John Matthew is haunting the house because those cards don't indicate to me that he is, he's moved on. Mark, are you there? Mark, are you there? Um, look at this guys. I get gr girl cards for the girls and men cards for the men. Um, what did you smoke and drink or smoke and drink? Or are you saying the brother smoked and drank? Okay. Oh, I get it. I get it. Sorry about that, Mark. I wasn't on the ball. Yes. Your brother had a drinking problem and he also had a drug problem. And he believes that the brother was under the influence of drugs, drinking, everything. He, he believes that the brother was under the influence. Also, the King of Cups can be, you know, that's the emotional card. So Mark, what do you, are you, Mark, are you like haunting the house or staying around the house, um, causing paranormal things? No, I left the house and the dogs and he's, he's with the dog now. So the dog is, the dog's on the other side with him and he's a traveler and he travels the galaxy and he also travels other cities because this is what he said he would have done. He's very young. I wonder if he was the youngest. Um, I don't think this gave the name of the family. No, it doesn't give the names. Um, but I wonder if Mark was the youngest. Let me see if I can find the age. Dawn, 18. Allison, 13. Mark was 12. So Mark was 12. He was young. And then John Matthew was nine. Um, oh, my gosh. So 
So it appears that the girls, Dawn being the angriest, um, but he, it looks like he's moved on. So I'm going to say that none of the boys are causing the paranormal. Now, I also want to ask, can a house where something like this happens, can a house where there's a lot of mass murders, can the house bring in other evil entities just from the fact of being having so many mass murders? Can houses become haunted in this way? Ouija board. Oh, <laughs> Okay, the Ouija board conjures up um, spirits like you don't want to play with the Ouija board. So it's, the cards are being very clear tonight. Yes, deceptive and evil spirits can come in when there is something that disturbing there. It It's like the breeding ground for um, entities that you don't want in the house. So this was one of the reasons I wondered why so many houses are haunted, have like major murders happening in them. It's it's not necessarily the people murdered folks. It opens the do windows. Well, here, you know, doors or windows. It opens the windows for the spirits, the Ouija board represents contact with, you got to be careful with Ouija boards, contact with spirits that you don't want. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of really horrible experiences with people with Ouija boards. So the cards directly answered my question on this one directly. And the answer is how to, because I had that question, how do houses become paranormal? Well, if there's a violent act committed in them, it's, it sets the energy up for bringing in the, the evil energies. So, um, that is very interesting. Now, um, Louise, I feel like we should talk to the mother. Louise, are you able to communicate anything or want to communicate with us? And here's Louise, the mother of her children. She's like, oh my God, she's only with two of her children, one boy and one girl. You know, you can probably go where you want when you're on the other side. So she's coming through with two children. And um, this is the card. Um, it's the six of pentacles. It's she wanted to take care of her family. She's talking about the big family she had. And this is the scales like it's not fair. It's that life wasn't fair that it happened this way. Um, I'm also going to ask if um, Ronald Sr. Is, is he on the other side? He, I don't know if he's going to be willing to talk or not. Um, oh, they're together. Okay, thank you. Um, okay. So she's together with him. Okay. So he's not, I don't feel like he really wants the front because he's looking at her. He's like, talk to her. He doesn't want to talk. He doesn't want to talk. So it's like her, she, you know, she's, and she's just mainly coming through to talk about her family, her large, her large group of family. And she's with, you know, she's aware that the children are on the other side. Um, that is so interesting. I feel like I, I just don't want to, you know, bring this horrible memory up to them. I'm just really thankful they came through. So I'm going to just leave it at that just to respect them because they did go through such a horrible ending to their lives. So I just thank all of them for coming through. Um, is there any way, I just have this question. I want to ask the haunted house tarot this question. Once a house is haunted, is there any way to remove the spirits? Is there any way to like remove the spirits? Kind of like an exorcism for a house. Um, there's the scales again, guys. Oh. This is the justice. Justice. That talks about, you know, uh, fairness and legal and, um, ooh. Oh, my God. That kind of looks like the Amityville. Look at that big house back there. And, oh, my God. Isn't this fascinating? So here's the Ten of Pentacles. Um, in the foreground and that, and, and that's the family. So this is indicating once again, the family's all together, but look at that house in the background. It's like the spirits have a certain amount of power and they want you to leave the house. They encourage people to, which of course the people who bought it have left. I don't know if anyone owns it now. So could a professional person, you know, force the spirits out of the house? Some of them are trapped. Huh, this might not be as easy. This is not really giving answers. Seven of Cups is it's confusing. Um, I'm thinking it's, here's the deal. 
I think I can't ask this question for all houses because I have a feeling every single case is different. I have a feeling that every single haunted house, some of the spirits can be removed, some they can't, but we can't globalize it. We can't put them all in one situation um, in this way and say that, you know, the cards are not going to say, if you do this, you know, you'll drive the spirits out because I don't think we can necessarily um, do that. So that's why I think that it's um, doing that. So this house is definitely haunted. It's, it's got spirits other than the um, one, people who live there possibly going being there and being angry. It's brought in other, with the Ouija board card, it's brought in other spirits. It is 100% haunted. Now, the weird thing is, is when they change the address from 112, which 112 um, is a 4, and that's, you know, a pretty stable place. But when they change it to 108, that's a 9, and 9 houses bring in paranormal activity. So they actually, I, it makes me wonder if the evil entities wanted, impressed upon them to change the address because it's interesting they changed it to a nine, which is one of the most paranormal numbers um, for a house to bring in activity because nine is endings, you know, when people's lives end or whatever, it can be endings. And it's also a vibration numerologically or in numerology for, a, for paranormal activity. So, all right, I feel like I have covered the Amityville um, house and it's very interesting. I do want to ask one question. Will there ever be a day, this is the Robin Wood Tarot, will, and I'll show, I'll show the deck here in one second. Thank you. Will there ever be a day when the Amityville house will not be haunted by evil spirits or the paranormal? Is there ever a day this is just going to be a normal house? Mm. No, not likely. Okay. So may, maybe the people that are in there are not experiencing paranormal. Are the people in there now experiencing any paranormal activity? Well, they're not happy. Like spirits are trying to get through to them, but it doesn't look like they're very open. It's almost like the people in there now don't believe in it. So the spirits are like, we're here. And they're like, I don't give a crap. So it makes them a little crabby at some of the stuff that's going on. But for the most part, they're ignoring it. Like the spirits are all there and they're like, nope, you're not here. I don't even, I'm not going to look at you. I'm not going to listen to you. You're not here. <laughs> so, all right. Well, I want to thank you for joining my channel. I want to thank um, the person who... Uh, suggested that I do this reading. It's been very interesting and I'll see you on the next video.